But first, we pass along breaking news tonight out of Beaumont. A fire at an apartment sent a man to the hospital. It broke out around 630 in the 1100 block of Georgia Street at the Hacienda Apartments. That's just blocks away from Lamar University. Firefighters found smoke from a second story apartment, so they forced they were their way in and found the victim with severe burns. He had to be flown to a hospital. District Chief Scott Wheat tells 12 News crews quickly contained the fire and the damage is limited to one apartment. They're still trying to search for the cause. Also tonight, we're keeping you updated on another story that's been developing throughout the evening. We're working to find out what's next for a 16 year old who Beaumont police blame for a deadly crash. Police tell us he was speeding in a maroon truck when he ran a red light and careened into a car at 11th and I-10 this afternoon. A 51 year old woman who was riding in the Chevy HHR died there at the scene. Now, police have not updated us on any other injuries, but we can tell you two other vehicles also crashed. Updates as we get them on air and online. All new at 10 people have already stepped up to repair the damage done by vandals in Port Arthur. This mural on the seawall was recently defaced by others who deemed themselves artists. The original painter went out to paint over it, but residents worry it'll happen again. And tonight they're calling for cameras to be installed to protect this. Port Arthur Mayor Thurman Barty has some strong words for those who've vandalized the mural. He shared them tonight with Jordan James. Jordan, vandalism along the seawall has been a constant, even forcing some to take matters into their own hands as the quest for a long-term solution continues. What once was a beacon of hope has transformed into an eyesore for many in Port Arthur. Respect other people, respect their work, and let's beautify Port Arthur. That was the goal for Armando Ruiz when he spearheaded efforts to have this mural painted along the seawall in 2019. Since then, it's been a constant target for vandals. And I'm very disappointed seeing how long it took uh, to put this together and then coming, coming, uh, coming, uh, uh, and then coming to see that people come and vandalized it, it is very saddening. It's gotten to the point where artists are constantly having to paint over vandalism, sparking anger for Port Arthur Mayor Thurman Barty. Please, I'm begging you, get your building and tag the hell out of it with your stuff. Mayor Barty says after witnessing the vandalism up close, he's prepared to have the council look at ways to protect the mural moving forward. That's, that's disrespectful. And the disrespect that is showing is actually something that's a disgrace. And if you're caught doing it, you're going to be handled. Here in the near future, a cleanup is scheduled with Port Arthur Police where community members and the police department are planning on cleaning up the vandalism. Once those details are released, we'll be sure to pass it along. Reporting here live in Beaumont, Jordan James, 12 News. Listen to that. Hail hitting hard in Leander in Central Texas this afternoon as a line of severe storms raced off to the east. This looked like yeah, not the uh, perfect backyard pool party for sure. A little closer to us, Matt in Tomball had smaller hail, but torrential rain when the storm hit his house. And you can bet folks are dealing with some damage from Central Texas through the Brazos Valley. Yes, Christiana, definitely larger than a quarter size hail there in the photos. So you're looking ahead. What are you expecting tonight into tomorrow? Well, it looks like the worst of the storms, it mainly stuck up towards the central and northern portions of Texas. But as we head into tonight, we did see a thunderstorm or two just within the past hour. But you see it is tracking off towards the east and most of the activity is up towards the north of us in east Texas. As we head into the overnight hours, looks like some showers up towards the lakes area. Pretty quiet in the triangle as we head off to work tomorrow morning and then some isolated showers throughout the early morning hours, but there is a 5% chance of seeing severe weather as we head into tomorrow, mostly up towards the lakes area for some pretty heavy rainfall. But for the most part, it looks like we are pretty good and those temperatures are going to be dropping down into the lower 60s in Lumberton and in the middle 60s for Bridge City and for Evadale, it looks like low 60s. So chilly temperatures out there and it looks like as we head into tomorrow, potential for one or two thunderstorms out there. It could produce some severe weather. We could see some hail, but mostly for that heavy rainfall and some of those gusty winds. But as we head into Saturday, it looks like early morning showers and then it clears out and we get beautiful sunny skies and refreshing temperatures as we head into Sunday. No information tonight on the scary scene at the San Antonio International Airport. Police shot and killed a man who they say had opened fire on the crowd. 
No one else was hurt, but it was certainly terrifying for travelers. There was a TSA lady um, and she yelled run and somebody said there's a shooter and that just kicked in and, and myself and a number of other people just grabbed our stuff and took off running. The airport was locked down but has since reopened. Investigators say the suspect had a full box of ammunition with them. No word tonight on a motive. Now that shooting came as the same day that the Texas House gave initial approval to a constitutional carry bill, one that would allow Texans to carry handguns without a permit. It's a major victory for gun rights activists who say nothing should stand in the way of protecting yourself and your family. But critics, including some in law enforcement, say this will make it easier for dangerous criminals to be armed. The House still needs to give final approval to the bill before it heads to the Senate. The Johnson & Johnson vaccine remains on pause tonight nationwide after at least six confirmed cases of blood clots found in women between the ages of 18 and 48. The trouble developed six to 13 days after they got the shot. Now, an FDA panel wants more data on those adverse reactions. The vaccine, though, is already in the bodies of millions of Americans. And that includes two people we are hearing from tonight, both of them receiving their Johnson & Johnson shots just days before this pause. 12 News reporter Amelia White has their concerns. Jordan Dage, I spent the day with two people who already have their... That's when they with two people already have their single doses. Both of them say they have the same sentiments towards the pause on the vaccine. I think I read it that six cases out of millions of vaccines that were given. So um, I wasn't concerned at all. Gwen Johnson got her Johnson & Johnson vaccine shot just days before the U.S. health officials called for a pulse. I received a Johnson & Johnson shot on Sunday at about 345. Vincent Grayson got his a week before the news. I sit down in the chair and they gave me a shot in my arm. And she told me to go sit down and rest for 15 minutes. When her process was pretty simple, no side effects. So I haven't really had any reactions. But it was a different story for Vincent. But the next day, <laughs> I started feeling kind of woozy. And I'm like, man, what's wrong with me? And I didn't think about me just taking a shot and getting sick. Even though the shot did leave him tired and drowsy, Vincent isn't concerned about the pause. You know, honestly, I think they're being dramatic. You know, I think they're really just overreacting. I, I really do. You know, six people out of a million people. Come on now. Gwen is optimistic that J&J &J will do whatever it takes to get them back in the vaccine business. I think these companies that Moderna, Pfizer and Johnson & Johnson, I think they've spent tons of millions of dollars on research and testing and trying to get their product to, product to the market. During a press conference on Tuesday, Dr. Fauci says it's unclear when J&J &J will begin to administer vaccines again. But Gwen says she hopes it's soon to protect the person closest to her. I was trying to sign my husband up for it, but they shut it down. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm waiting for them to open back up so I can go ahead and get him in there with me. Quinn and Vincent says while Johnson and Johnson are investigating these rare cases, people should actually do their due diligence in research information they are seeking to know. In Beaumont, Amelia White. 12 News. All right, thank you, Amelia. While the CDC weighs its options with the J&J &J shot, Pfizer's CEO is saying we may have to roll up our sleeves more often. The head of Pfizer saying you'll likely need to get a third shot six to 12 months after you've been fully vaccinated with their vaccine. That would help protect you from the variants. From there, it's looking like annual COVID shots similar to flu shots. The variants will play a key role. It is extremely important to suppress the pool of people that uh, can be susceptible to the virus. Now we know Pfizer's vaccine is 91% effective at least six months after that second dose. Moderna hasn't said what it will recommend. By the numbers, good news as we begin to round the corner to end our week. The stats are down across the board, so let's start with cases. On Thursday, the region logged 51 new coronavirus cases, and that's down about 30 from the day before. 14 from Jefferson, 15 from Liberty, and another 20 coming from Chambers County. Eight Southeast Texans lost their battle with COVID-19. And when we step back to look at the big picture, the 14-day average for where we stand in the hospitals, that's heading in the right direction, too. Here's a snapshot for the region, breaking it down. 17% of those in the ICU have COVID-19. Nearly 9% in general beds are battling the virus. That's about 117 patients. And so that sets our regional hospitalization rate at 9%.
In case you missed it, final preps are underway for tomorrow's Natchez River Festival Parade. It'll wind its way through downtown Beaumont starting at 7 in the evening. Organizers say they have backup plans for the block party if it rains. Now, downtown businesses are certainly looking forward to this and other events bringing back customers. These events downtown do help. You know, when we know about them and then they're coming, and we can all plan. And um, we'll say we as a group downtown, we really should get together on that stuff and really plan that out and uh, so we can all benefit from it. So the parade goes on rain or shine. The coronation uh, and the ball are still a go for Saturday. For more info on all the events with the Natchez River Fest, go to 12newsnow.com. A man from Orange faces several charges after investigators say he threatened to shoot a woman. Police say Christopher Shagwa remains behind bars after he was arrested for that disturbance on Knox Street. A judge hasn't set his bond. Get ready to start seeing ads pushing for casinos here in Texas. Expect to hear about the billions of tourism and gambling dollars that leave Texas every year for places like Oklahoma and Louisiana. A bipartisan bill to legalize gambling is gaining ground in Austin. A two thirds vote required to overturn the state's current ban on gambling. But ultimately, the goal is to get this on the ballot this November for Texans to decide. Dive teams have joined the search for 12 workers missing from that capsized lift boat off the Louisiana coast. The Coast Guard wants the divers to go down to the submerged boat to see if any of the missing are trapped inside. The 129 foot commercial vessel owned by a Houston company overturned in high seas and hurricane force winds Tuesday. One worker was found dead. Six victims were safely rescued.